Well, Josh, thanks for this opportunity. Um, yeah, I mean, I think what God has been really faithful to me in, in the last few years of my life is just um, helping me see that a life lived by fear is just not a life well lived. Um, I've operated through fear like a good chunk of my life. I mean, I just go back to preschool, you know, I didn't talk for like the first two, three months of uh, preschool. I mean, I remember my, my teacher, she lost her mind when I said the word spider. She's like, this kid talks. It must have been Halloween, you know, I don't, I don't know why I would have said the word spider, but it must have been Halloween, we were drawing some stuff. But it was just like, I don't know, I've just been like fearful of like embarrassing myself, I'm fearful of this situation right now. Um, uh, fearful of um, looking stupid, fearful of success, and then on the flip side of that, like, if I am successful, I'm fearful I'm going to let people down, or I'm going to be fearful of, like, okay, the bar's set up here, and I can't reach that bar all the time, you know, um, and ultimately, I think fearful of just that, like, I'm not God, and I can't control my world, and things happen, and whatnot, um, and one of my favorite uh, scriptures come to mind in that it's kind of like an indirect way of talking about fear, but it's just where Jesus is feeding the 5,000. Um, and he asks Philip, he says, hey, how are we going to feed these people? How, like, what's it going to cost? And, you know, Philip gives him a genuine answer. He says it's going to cost half a year's wages, which that's a lot of money. You know, if I were to give up my half wages, that would suck. <laughs> um, but... Um, Man, if I'm going to put myself into that story and I'm going to play out fear, I'm going to say, uh, God, that looks ridiculous. That looks unmanageable. I'm out. Um, or, you know, he switches over to Andrew, and, and Andrew points to this kid with uh, loaves and, and, and uh, fish, and that also is going to make us look stupid. We're going to have to cut that stuff up into small little pieces, and my fear is going to um, propel me forward, you know. Um, but even further where, where that, my story is in that, um, you, know, um, you know, drinking became an increasingly, uh, you know, more and more part of my life. Um, and, uh, you know, fear was a big part of that. You know, fear that I can't control my world, fear that I can't do these things, and that stuff would, you know, really quiet those nerves and quiet that, that idea um, until it became more damaging in my life. You know, and um, if I'm in that story with Jesus, you know, he's looking out and saying, how, how are you going to fix this thing? And again, if I'm going to let fear drive me, I'm going to say, okay, God, uh, what you're suggesting or what I think you're going to do is ridiculous. That's too scary. I'm, I'm out. And I, you know, tried a number of ways to, to navigate that thing. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that story, that scripture continues on where, where, um, after Jesus asked Philip, hey, how are we going to uh, afford this thing? Uh, it says Jesus was testing him because he knew what he was already going to do. Um, I've lived a lot of life, you know, contempt prior to investigation. You know, my fear has told me I know the answer and your answer doesn't fit what I'm going to do. You know, there's a lot of arrogance and ego in that. Um, but, you know, Philip was a willing um, disciple of, of Jesus and he was able to lean into that fear and participate. And I feel like finally gained the willingness to participate in this journey with God to, um, I wouldn't say my fears eradicated, but I would say that, that God has shown his faithfulness to me and to see that like fear, um, he dispels that. But um, yeah, participation in this faith is something I've, I've grown to, to learn so much about, you know, that you know, faith without works is dead in that, um, you know, when I choose to dip out and do my own thing, like, it's just not going to work out. But as I trust in God and uh, take steps in the path that he's already, you know, paved, you know, sure, it takes some action, but he's already done the hard, you know, the heavy lifting there. So, um, yeah, God's good and, and fear is just not of him. And we can, I can step into that with, with hope and with trust and, uh, yeah, goodness. Can I ask you a question? Sure. You mentioned just... Uh, stepping into participation in your faith and it was seemed like you're saying that's something that you didn't necessarily want to do. Sure, yeah. But, but then I you mean, did. Yeah. What, uh, what was that step of participation and, and what did it look like for you to take the first one? Uh, I mean, there, there's so much to that, but, you know, I mean, that's just, you know, willingness to pick up the phone call and, and call and ask for help. You know, calling friends, calling people that 
you know, have a solution to this to this whole deal. And, and I got friends that um, have this same thing that I got, and I've got friends that are that don't, and, and just have you know, Jesus in their lives, and just being willing to accept uh, help, being willing to uh, accept God into my my life again. You know, I, um, you know, I would say that I trusted in God with my words. You know, mm-hmm. hey God, I believe in you. God, help me, but, like, not doing anything about it, you know, not coming to church, not not picking up anything to, to actually show that, like, this has meaning in my life, you know. Um, yeah. Nothing, you know, just a lot of lip service, you know. Um, so willing to ask for help and willing to do the things that we're, we're asked to really uh, target the fear, target all the other things that are behind it, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And then when you took that step, do you feel like God met you in that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, what's one way? Well, I just, I mean, I don't hear from God in, in like audible ways, but you know, in this, I just felt God clearly saying, you know, um, how far down? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you here. How far down are you uh, willing to go to see that I'm still here? You know? Oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty big. <laughs> that's, that's a powerful <laughs> word, dude. Come here. Thanks, man. Wow. Thank you. Thanks for trusting us with uh, your story. <laughs> I, I hope this encourages you. Uh, part of, I feel like, what part of your, your story was just now, as you said, one of the steps of participation in your faith was, was acknowledging your need for help and you actually took a tangible step and you picked up the phone and called somebody. Um, I, I submit that to us. You know, we could pay lip service to our faith, but there's something about participating in our faith that requires being vulnerable and reaching out to our community and our people with our story and trusting ourselves to each other. And that's what I, what I hear in your story and that's where I hear God meeting you. Um, so let me pray for you. Uh, Lord, thanks for Trev. Thanks for his willingness to share this story with us. I pray that you use uh, this story right now to just touch our hearts. There's somebody, there's multiple people here this morning that probably needed to hear exactly that, Lord. I pray that you're, you're making that clear to them right now and that Trevor's willingness to share himself with us prompts us to be a church that is willing to share uh, our lives, our struggles, with each other and that you are found in the midst there, that you meet us through each other. Uh, Lord, would you continue to foster that type of of community in this church through people uh, willing to be like Trevor, willing to be vulnerable and trust themselves to you by trusting themselves to your people. So God, we, uh, we thank you for, for our church. We thank you for Trevor. We thank you for your willingness Uh, to meet us right in the middle of wherever we are right now. We trust ourselves to you, and we, uh, we ask all these things in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen. Thanks, man. Hey, everybody, uh, give Trev a hand, would you?